Welcome to the Rewriting Naruto series part 22, a series of videos where I rewrite Naruto making changes to improve the story for my personal taste. This is just part 22 of a very long series so definitely subscribe so you never miss any future rewrites. Ring the notification bell so you'll always know when they come out and like this video to support the channel and the series. The goal is gonna be 1400 likes. If we get to 1400 within the first 24 hours I'll drop the next rewrite within a week. Come on guys if everyone likes this is gonna be a piece of cake naruto says the uzumaki clan what do you mean tsunade says yes naruto the uzumaki clan so am i a member of a clan kakashi says well the uzumaki clan used to be an important and powerful clan in the land of fire however the clan as an institution no longer exists really i didn't know that neji says that's surprising the uzumaki used to be very powerful like the hyuga maybe even more so tsunade says Yes, the Uzumaki clan was a powerful clan. They had a village just for themselves on an island in the coast of the Land of Fire. It is called the Land of Whirlpools. The Uzumaki were known for their great chakra reserve, stamina, and proficiency with sealing jutsus. Naruto seems surprised. But what happened to them? Tsunari says they were destroyed. The Uzumaki clan was decimated by a calamity that our spies believe has returned to their lands. Sakura says, What kind of calamity, Lady Tsunade? Several decades ago, after the Leaf Village won the first Great Ninja War, a being of chakra appeared in the land of Whirlpools. The Uzumaki clan tried to fight it, but they were destroyed. The first Hokage then went to the land of Whirlpools when he caught wind of it and defeated sad calamity. Naruto says, but you said the first Hokage died there. What did you mean by that? That being of energy, it somehow changed the nature of chakra itself. That's what my grandfather reported after he returned from the land of whirlpools. Sakura says, like changing the elemental type? Not exactly. When I said changing the nature of chakra, I meant to say that the creature managed to transform chakra into something else. So what happened to the first Hokage? After my grandfather returned to the leaf village, he was afflicted by a condition, a disease. No one had ever seen anything like that before. It was as though my grandfather's chakra became dull and sick. He lost so much of his strength. The the Leaf Village and the Land of Fire tried everything to hide that fact and heal the first Hokage, but no one found a solution. Eventually my grandfather became too ill to remain the Hokage and he stepped down. That's when the second Hokage took office. Soon after that, upon seeing weakness in our village, other nations attacked, trying to catalyze on my grandfather's disease, which they found out about. And thus, the second Great Ninja War began. Five years after my grandfather went to the land of whirlpools, he died from the chakra disease. That's why I am not forcing any of you to go on this mission, because of the risk this disease poses. Your mission would be to go there and stop the calamity. I am afraid that if this isn't contained, it could spread its chaotic energy and wreak havoc on the land of fire. Naruto says, I'm not afraid of this disease or whatever it is. I'm not letting this thing threaten the land of fire. Sakura, Neji, and Kakashi nod as well. Tsunade says, I haven't finished yet. There is something else. Your lives may not be the only ones in danger when you visit the land of whirlpools. Kakashi then says in a somber tone, are you referring to the Senju clan plague? Lady Tsunade, I am. Naruto says, Senju clan? I've never heard of it. Tsunade says, the Senju clan was the clan of the first and second Hokages. It was one of the clans that founded the Leaf Village, a powerful clan who was only rivaled by the Uchi Chiha clan. And what was that plague all about? After the end of the Second Great Ninja War, the entire Senju clan got ill with the same chakra disease that affected Hashirama. The whole clan died in a matter of weeks. What? What do you mean? But how? Hashirama only died after five years. That's because he was so much more powerful than anyone else. He managed to withstand the disease much longer than the rest of the clan. But if my math is right, Hashirama was dead by that point. Point, wasn't he? Yes, he was. We believe that somehow, even though Hashirama was the only member of the clan that came into contact with a chakra being, the disease was passed through some type of mysterious blood connection shared by the Sanju clan members. No one else 
got the disease only Senju, so that's the only possible explanation. And no one even got the disease when Hashirama was alive, and people visited him constantly as well. Up until this day, we have no idea how to cure it. This is the risk going on this mission. Your families could be in danger as well. Sakura says, I never knew that happened. This is terrifying. Naruto says, Still, if we don't do anything, this thing can get to the land of fire and kill even more. Besides, I have no family, so that risk wouldn't apply to me. I would understand if you guys didn't want to go, but I have no reason not to. Kakashi says, I also have no family, so I would only be risking my life too. Sakura says, I'll go. I think my parents would understand. Tsunade says, Those were horrible days. Seeing comrades dying left and right, powerless to do anything about it. You must be sure about your convictions. Neji is very reflective. Tsunade says, Neji, I will understand if you wouldn't want to put the Hyuga clan in such danger. Neji says, It's not that. I was just thinking. You're a Senju too, aren't you, Lady Tsunade? You are the granddaughter of the first Hokage, so how come you survived this plague? I was wondering if you would ask me that question. The chakra disease had an exception. It didn't affect Senju's with Uzumaki blood. My grandmother was from the Uzumaki clan, hence I wasn't affected by the chakra disease. I had to watch my family die while I couldn't do anything myself. I was young. Maybe if I had developed my medical skills enough by that time, I would have saved them. Naruto remembers what Sasuke told him about losing his clan and that he could not ever understand such a pain because Naruto has always been alone. Sakura says, I'm sorry Lady Tsunade, I never knew. It happened a long time ago and now I'm worried about you and your families. Naruto says, so I wouldn't be affected by it anyway, but Granny Tsunade, you're Nozumaki too? Does that mean we're related? Well, we are probably distant relatives, members of the same clan. Maybe you're the sister of my great-grandmother. Tsunade gets pissed. Just how old do you think I am, Naruto? Yeah, uh, I don't know. You always pretend to be young, so it's kind of difficult to tell. Tsunade looks furious, but she changes subject. Regardless, Naruto, it's fundamental for you not to use the Nine Tails chakra during this mission. We don't know what would happen if it came into contact with a calamity. All right, I'm not using that old stinky fox anyway. Tsunade seems worried. She says, I would go myself to this mission. Being in Uzumaki would make me immune to the disease, but I am afraid I can't leave the village. Sakura says, because of the Akatsuki? Well, that too, but something else worries me. Naruto says, what is it, Granny Tsunade? I'll take care of it. There's nothing you can do about it, Naruto. It's Danzo. He's getting bolder, sending his root Anbu members to more missions around the land of fire. He's trying to establish a foothold. I fear that if I left the village, he would attempt a coup. Neji says, I see, so he is as problematic as I heard. Naruto says, that stupid old man, I'll clobber his face if he ever does anything to you, Lady Tsunade. Tsunade says, no, Naruto, you're not ready to deal with this type of politics yet. Best to focus on your mission. Kakashi is thoughtful. He says, Lady Tsunade, rest assured that if anything like that ever happened, the shinobi from the leaf would come to the protection of the village. Tsunade says, yes, of course. Kakashi then changes subject. So, what does this bean of chakra look like, Lady Tsunade? Is it something like a tail beast? Unfortunately, my grandfather's reports were quite vague. He said it was a bean of chakra that could alter the nature of chakra and other beings. However, he said that the bean was the size of a human, so it's probably different from a tail beast. If you're all in agreement, your mission is to travel to the land of whirlpools and eliminate the source of the calamity. All members of Team Kakashi nod. Tsunade says, very well then, you leave effective immediately. This is an issue that cannot wait. The land of fire is counting on you. In the bowels of the leaf village, the Onimas figure kneels in front of Danzo and says, the bean of calamity has indeed returned to the land of whirlpools. It seems it is able to force its chakra into other creatures, turning them into monsters. However, the most concerning aspect is its ability to alter chakra. My jutsu became useless. Danzo says, as I thought, the land of fire is in grave danger. And to make things even worse, the slug princess has made her most imbecile decision yet, sending the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails on a mission to stop this calamity. Should I follow them and watch over 
Naruto Uzumaki again then? No, this time you'll need to take a more direct approach. We cannot allow the Nine Tails to come into contact with the Calamity. No one can predict what will happen when the Nine Tails' chakra gets altered. It could result in a catastrophe of unprecedented scale to the land of fire. You must bring the Jinchuriki back to the Leaf Village by all means necessary, even if you have to kill his companions. Is that understood? The Oni Mask figure pauses. Dealing with Sakura Haruno and Neji Hyuga would be no problem. The copy ninja, however, is something else. Yes, he is powerful, but I am sure you can fulfill your duty. What about the calamity itself? Shouldn't I try to stop it? No, I have already arranged for it to be stopped. Your mission has only one objective. Retrieve the Jinchuriki. Remember, it's not only now to Uzumaki who is in danger here, but the entire land of fire. Failure is not an option. Team Kakashi composed of Naruto, Sakura, Kakashi and Neji jump through the Land of Fire forest, making their way towards the Land of Whirlpools. Naruto seems thoughtful. He says, So my whole clan died, just like his. I never even knew my last name was important. I just thought they gave it to me to keep the fourth Hokage's enemies away. Kakashi says, The descendants of powerful clans usually inherit the clan name. Even though the Uzumaki clan is mostly gone, the name still carries power. Kakashi-sensei, my father was your sensei. Did you know my mom too? Minato-sensei was the strongest ninja of his time. Only one thing was able to strike fear in his heart, and that would be your mother. Naruto gets scared. My mom was angry then? She could be, but she was also a very kind woman. You actually remind me much more of her than your father. Naruto smiles. I see. I'm actually glad you said that. And maybe, just maybe we'll find someone else in the land of whirlpools. Sakura says, Yeah, I heard some people still live in the ruins of the land of whirlpools. Maybe they will know something about what's going on. Neji says, Yeah, that could work to our advantage. But we should be careful. We never know. They could be hostile to us. Naruto says, Neji, I don't mean to act ungrateful. You're definitely a lot of help, but why are you risking your clan coming with us? Neji says, I got approval from Lord Hiyashi. He thought this was a matter that superseded the Hyuga clan itself. Besides, I I am from the branch family. The seal that was put on my forehead effectively separates me from the main family. If the disease is transmitted through bloodlines, it shouldn't affect the rest of the clan whatsoever. Oh, right. I remember that. Sakura says, It's alright, Neji. Naruto is just worried about Hinata's safety. What? What do you mean, Sakura? Neji says, Yeah, what's the deal with you and Hinata? Nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I think you two fit together. Just imagine Naruto and the head of the Hyuga clan together. You'll be my patriarch. Though, if you have any intentions with Hinata, you'll have to go through Lord Hiyashi, and he is not fond of you. I'll be the Hokage, he's not getting in my way. So you do have intentions with her. Naruto blushes. It's uh, just that uh, I- Kakashi says, focus everyone. We're on an S rank mission, not a happy hour. Team Kakashi nods, and they keep moving forward. Heavy rain falls on a city of tall metallic buildings. High up on one of those towers, a figure stands, shaded by darkness. The figure says, Zetsu has informed me that there is a disturbance in the land of whirlpools. Something related to an ancient, powerful chakra. My angel, you shall go investigate the site. Bring back anything that could be of value to our organization. A blue-haired woman wearing the Akatsuki robe stands near the figure. She says, Should we really trust Zetsu? I am not sure if he has the same goals as ours. The figure says, Your skepticism is warranted, Conan. That is why I'm sending you, and only you there. The figure opens his eyes. Two glowing renegons in the darkness. For now, we will act on Zetsu's information. Conan says, Very well. Pain. Night falls. Tim Kakashi is still making their way to the land of whirlpools. Rain begins to fall and they decide to set up camp in a cave. Kakashi says, It's a three-day journey to the land of whirlpools. If we don't rest, we'll be exhausted when we get there. We have to be in ideal conditions for this mission. Kabuto sits underneath a tree. Rain pours around him as he looks at the scroll depicting the Reaper Death Seal Mask and 
those six intricate daggers. He rolls up the scroll and puts up his hood. Two days later, Team Kakashi find themselves in a port city in the land of fire. The city bustles with activity, merchant ships and commerce. We can see other ninjas from the leaf village stationed in the city for protection, patrol and other types of assignments. Kakashi points to the ocean and says, the land of whirlpools is directly ahead. Naruto says, oh yeah, it's an island. Are we getting a ship? Kakashi laughs. Why should we? We're ninjas. Kakashi begins to run over the ocean water towards the land of whirlpools. Naruto, Sakura and Neji follow. After five hours of running over the ocean water, they finally see an island taking shape in the distance. Kakashi says, we're near. Once we arrive, we'll take a rest. Running for several hours while molding our chakra to walk on water is demanding. Team Kakashi arrives at the beaches of the land of whirlpools. They set up camp as the night begins to fall. And Naruto says, so where do we go after here? Kakashi says, the best place to start will be the Uzumaki city, which was the capital of its land. Neji, do you see anything? Neji has his Byakugan activated. As he looks around, searching, he says, I don't see anyone, but there's something else that's strange. There's a lot of chakra surrounding us, in the air itself. It looks unnatural, different from regular chakra. Kakashi says, is it nature energy? No, I've only seen nature energy manifest at once or twice before, but this is definitely different. Naruto says, what's nature energy? Kakashi says, it's essentially chakra that flows through nature itself, and only a handful of individuals are able to draw from it. But if this is not nature energy, that makes me feel more uneasy, because we don't know what it is. Sakura says, does it feel like tail beast chakra? I've only seen the nine tails as chakra before, but this feels completely different as well. Kakashi says, there's no point trying to guess what it is then. It's probably something none of us has ever seen before. What we can do is stay sharp and rest as well as we can. Kakashi lays several traps, including wire traps, around the location of their camp and then says, we're gonna take shifts and watch over for any threats. Who wants to start? Naruto volunteers to start and he begins to watch as the other members of the squad go to sleep. From a distance, the Oni masked figure looks at Naruto, who is illuminated by the bonfire. He's the only member of Team Kakashi that's up. The Oni masked figure then begins to move towards Naruto, making absolutely no sound. The figure moves between the shadows of the trees and rocks nearby, expertly avoided the traps Kakashi laid. Naruto has no idea someone is approaching. The Oni masked figure gets within 5 meters of the camp. Naruto's back is turned towards him. Kakashi wakes up and throws a kunai towards the Oni masked figure's direction. The entire team wakes up then and Naruto turns around alarmed. What was that Kakashi sensei? Kakashi's kunai landed on a tree. No one is there. Neji activates his Byakugan and scouts the area. He says, I don't see anything. Kakashi says, it must have been my imagination. After waiting for a couple of minutes to see if anything appears, they go back to sleep. Team Kakashi wakes up the next day and they make their way towards the Yuzumaki city. As they get closer to the city, Neji says, the closer we get, the denser the chakra surrounding us becomes. It's even limiting my Byakugan range. Kakashi says, then the source must definitely be in the city somewhere. They arrive at the ruins of the Yuzumaki city. The chakra is so dense that it is visible in the air. The city expands far and it is taken by the vegetation. Naruto says, what will we be looking for now? Kakashi says, anything that looks out of the ordinary. We should not split up. Best we stay together and use strength in numbers if anything happens. Neji, can you see anything? Unfortunately, the chakra surrounding us is so dense that the effective range of the Byakugan is only 30 meters. Right now, though, I don't see anything strange. Team Kakashi begins to scout the area, looking into several ruins. Naruto says, this is really spooky. Sakura says, come on, Naruto, are you scared? Naruto says, I'm not scared, I'm just saying it's spooky. They continue to search for hours, but the only thing they see are the destroyed buildings and signs that people once lived here. Night begins to fall again and they haven't seen anything. Neji hasn't found anything with his Byakugan, but then a powerful female voice that reverberates around the entire land says, What is this chakra I sense? It feels nostalgic. 
Team Kakashi gets alarmed. Naruto says, I told you it was spooky. This has to be some sort of monster. Sakura says, Yeah, I think I'm leaning towards agreeing with you this time. Neji says, I saw chakra coming from the ground itself and that voice spoke. Kakashi says, Apparently the thing is underground then. Team Kakashi then hears a child screaming from far away. Help me! Help me, please! They all rush towards the direction of the voice, jumping through the ruins. They reach the source of the commotion. A small red-haired boy is crying as some of the vines that engulf the ruins gained life and are grappling him. The vines ooze chakra from all sorts of colors. It's as though they are trying to infuse it into the boy's body. Naruto weaves hand signs saying, Wind style! Wind cutter! Naruto spits a gust of air that turns into a large vertical blade of air, impacting and slicing through the vines that grapple the boy, cutting them clean. Naruto runs forward and catches the boy, jumping away from the vines. Sakura says, Naruto, watch out! Naruto looks to the side and an ocean of vines has now gained life, infused by the weird chakra. They are about to completely swallow Naruto and the boy. Neji jumps in front of him, assuming a stance. 16 trigrams. 128 palms. Neji begins to strike the vines one by one with absurd speed, dismantling and destroying them. They don't stop coming, however, Neji manages to hit them faster than they can advance towards Naruto. The ground begins to shake and the female omnipresent voice says, I won't let you go away this time, Kurama. Two massive flies made out of the strange chakra erupt from the ground right beneath Sakura and Kakashi, forcing the two to jump away and dodge. The boy on Naruto's arms begin to cry even more. No, mom, please stop, please. Naruto puts him down and creates a small army of clones. A dozen of clones surround the boy protecting him. Neji keeps on striking the vines with blinding speed, preventing them from advancing more. But they are beginning to overwhelm him. Kakashi looks at the two huge, disgusting flies flying above them and says, Naruto, Sakura, you take the one on the left. I'll take the one on the right. Naruto and Sakura nod. Sakura jumps up towards the left fly. However, it spits acid towards Sakura, who's midair, unable to dodge. Wind style! Great wind schism! Several Naruto clones spit powerful gusts of wind that intercept the acid, dissipating it. Sakura reaches the fly, grappling it by the snout. She then dodges another acid spat by throwing herself up, using the fly as leverage. She manages to stay above the fly and lands a massive kick that sends the fly crashing to the ground. The vines approach the Naruto clones protecting the boy and they destroy them as they pick them apart one by one, overwhelming the clones. As they are about to grapple the boy again, Neji intercepts them and uses his rotation to protect the boy and destroy the vines and destroy the vines at the same time. However, they keep coming and stop Neji's rotation. He then assumes another stance. 32 trigrams. 256 bombs. Neji begins to strike the vines with even more speed. It's almost impossible to see his hands moving. Kakashi dodges acid barrages coming from above, the second fly pursuing him. The acid that lands on the ruins melts stone. The ground behind Kakashi then begins to erupt once more. A gigantic demonic looking bat erupts from it and begins to attack him, assaulting Kakashi with sound waves. Ten Naruto clones weave hand signs saying, Wind style! Wind dragon! The Ten dragons quickly form and impact the grounded fly with an explosion, destroying it. The strain chakra evaporates. Kakashi dodges the acid, but the sound waves unleashed by the bat begin to make him dizzy. He weaves hand signs. Earth style. Pebble control. Two small rocks shoot from the ground towards Kakashi's ears. They shape themselves according to the shape of his ear holes and attach themselves to them. He manages to neutralize the bat's sound attack by blocking the sound itself and thinks I didn't want to overuse my chakra but I better finish this up before it turns ugly. Kakashi weaves hand signs, lightning style, 
Twin lightning beasts. His hand ignites in lightning that takes the shape of two massive lightning hounds, skipping through the air, dashing with intense speed towards the fly and the bat. The chakra creatures attempt to flee from the lightning hounds, however, they are tracked down and the hounds impact the bat and the fly. Their bodies are consumed by lightning and they begin to fall. Kakashi thinks, what? There wasn't enough to kill them? Kakashi activates a Raikiri and runs towards the massive falling creatures. Neji is still trying to destroy all the vines incoming towards the boy. Before the flying the bat hit the ground, Kakashi lands the Raikiri on both, destroying them as their chakra evaporates. Kakashi thinks, these things are pretty strong. If several of them attacked us at the same time, that would be a problem. Neji finally destroys all the vines that were infused with chakra and they stop coming. Naruto runs to the boy saying, are you okay, little guy? The boy answers, still scared and crying. Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> Sakura comes up to him and heals the boy's grazed knee. Kakashi also rejoins the group. Naruto looks at Kakashi saying, Do you know who this Kurama the voice was talking about is, Kakashi-sensei? I'm afraid I don't, but there's something else. Kakashi looks at the boy and says with a smile, You're fine now. We're not gonna let anyone hurt you. The boy calms down after hearing Kakashi's tender words. Could you tell us why you're here? I was looking for my mom. She's talking to us the whole time. She is alive. I know it. Naruto says, wait, wait, wait a minute. That voice we heard, is that your mom's voice? Yes, she's alive. The others are saying she has turned into a ghost and is tormenting us, but I know she's alive. What the hell is going on here? Watch part 23 of the rewrite right here. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and like this video so we can reach the like goal. Come on guys, let's do it. Comment below what you thought about this episode and and thanks for watching.